so we want you to realize that there's going to be some of that but we have a new way of explaining it to you and those who have been hearing and have been focusing in this new way are getting results extraordinary results easily so here it is as you stand in your now do you accept that you're vibrational sort of kind of and is it logical to you that you have been offering habits of thought so that you do have a point of attraction when you think of the people you know or even yourself in many cases couldn't you describe most of them who you know well couldn't you describe most of them with a singular emotional word sort of like the seven dwarfs <laughs> bashful and happy in other words don't you know don't you know ornery don't you know pensive don't you know defensive don't you know eager don't you know happy and while everyone you know moves about a bit and could be described in many of these ways you do sort of have these habits of thought that hold you in those sort of moods don't you so we would like you to think of those moods or emotions as vibrational points of attraction just like the emotional scale that we talked about a few years ago where there is despair and fear and grief really low feeling vibrations and then there is revenge which is an improvement and anger which is an improvement still and overwhelmment and frustration improvement still and then you get into hope and then you get into joy and eager and appreciation and all those good feeling vibrations so we want you to think of this grid this point of attraction this spinning grid point of attraction sweeping around gathering up all cooperative components and bringing you to them and them to you because creation is really rendezvousing it's what it is your point of attraction causes you to rendezvous with things that are like you that are of a vibrational frequency that you are at so if you think of these spinning grid discs let's just call it the high flying disc that's what you want to be on that high flying disc you want to be on the high flying disc but sometimes things have happened that make it impossible in this moment or improbable in this moment for you to be on the high flying disc so what we are suggesting is that you do it when it's easier don't wait until something is manifested and has your attention because when you're looking right at something that you do not want there's plenty of momentum going and there's not enough that you can do focus wise usually in that moment that's going to change that momentum and that's why we say hang on it'll be over in a little bit after a good night's sleep you can take another run at it so now we would like to say to you that while you slumber during that sleep time you know what that is do you know what the real benefit of sleep is it gives you a respite from your momentum because it's sort of like in that high flying vibration imagine a cork bobbing up on the surface you can hold it under the water but when you let go of it it's gonna bob right back up to the surface so we want you to realize that it is natural for you to feel good it is natural for you to be in alignment it is natural for you to be blended with all that you've become it is natural for you to have full resonance with who you are and it is unnatural for you to be focused upon something chronically or even all day that holds you in a feeling of a knot in your stomach because you're defying your energy you're disallowing the full energy that is you so as we talk about these discs and we encourage you to get on that high flying disc if when you awakened first thing in the morning you acknowledge oh I have a sort of clean slate because during the night my momentum stopped so now I can choose a good feeling thought if you choose something that is general something that's not too detailed something that feels really good and you're able to maintain it for 17 seconds and then another and then another and you actually manage to lie in bed until you've crossed the 68 second mark now you have a chance to have different momentum going today your point of attraction your spinning grid so to speak what comes to you it is our promise to you will be a vibrational match to how you feel now you might not make it till breakfast before something causes you to fall off that disc you might not make it till breakfast 
But you can do it again tomorrow, and 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 you can do it again tomorrow. Again tomorrow. Until after a while, not that long, certainly within 30 days, you will have established a vibrational precedence, a vibrational habit. You know, a belief is just a habit of thought. So if you think a thought and you don't contradict it and you allow the momentum to go, then the momentum will be such that this thought will gather enough momentum that then you will become a believer of it. Years ago, when we first began talking about thoughts, we said a belief is just a thought that you keep thinking. And Esther and Jerry, we remember many conversations with them. They were sort of arguing with us because it felt to them as if a belief is something that is reality. I believe it because it's real, Abraham. I believe it because it's real. And we say, no, it's real because you believe it. It becomes reality because you believe it. Well, they argued, but I haven't really thought that much about that. And we say, you just got to know that you're born into belief systems and many of them serve you well and many of them don't serve you well. And to be a deliberate creator, you get to sort out the ones that serve you and you get to sort out the ones that don't serve you. And it is our promise to you, we can make this complicated and we don't want to, or we can make it simple and we really want to. If you will wake up in the morning and reach for the best feeling thought that you can find and practice it just a little while, you will begin to notice that your point of attraction has changed to the point that you will begin to feel invincible because you will barely begin to speak things that are pleasurable to you or desirable to you or wanted by you and the universe will begin an orchestration of them coming to you Esther has been in Del Mar for a few weeks and the other day she went to a fast food restaurant and got her favorite we won't tell you well we will <laughs> in and out burger and and then went down to Mission Bay to eat it. And she was watching people who had gathered there for fun. There were people on jet skis, there were people on sailboats, there were people sunning, people running, people exercising, people picnicking, all manner of people all over this place. And Esther just sat in her car and, and enjoyed her burger and watched them. And she was feeling high and invincible. She had been practicing this for a while. She'd been feeling so good. She'd been doing everything that she could think of to put herself in that place of feeling good. And she had good feeling momentum going, really good feeling momentum going. So she's just sitting and enjoying. And then she thought, I wonder how they are feeling. And so she started looking at them with a little more purpose. And no one looked like they felt like she was feeling. And then she thought, well, they've come down here because they want to feel good. I came down here because I did feel good. She thought, I found my high flying disc and then I came. Where so often, and she remembered of herself as well, I've come here for it to cheer me up. It's different. When you get on your high flying disc and then, you get on your disc and then you follow the inspiration. Oh, the dynamics, the synergy, the co-creative power. You begin to feel invincible because now you've accessed this energy that creates worlds. You have a leverage that few deliberately harness, but you can. So Esther sat there, she has her notebook and she writes things that occur to her. And she wrote with clarity, universe, show me others who feel like I feel. So now it's time for her to leave. And so she gathers herself up and gets back out onto the roadway. And this roadway goes through a couple of intersections and then it goes right onto Interstate 5, back to Del Mar where she lives. And as she crossed through the intersection, it was hard for her to get through without clogging it because the traffic was backed up. And as soon as she got through the last intersection, she realized mm, there must be a problem on the freeway and there's no escape because everything says no U-turn and there are no streets to turn off off. In other words, she was now committed to get on the freeway and the freeway was clearly clogged. She was on the inside lane and so she immediately just made an illegal U-turn. <laughs> and so did the car behind her. It was like synchronized illegal driving. <laughs> and now she's facing the intersection that she had just come through and happy 
that she is not on that path of most resistance. She found illegal, we'll give it that, <laughs> path of least resistance. The man who had been behind her, who is now in front of her because they've turned around, got out of his car, beautiful white hair, smiles that looked bigger than his head, and came to the window of her car and said, I've been driving around here for a long time and never, ever, ever have I seen anyone follow their gut instinct with such success so quickly. <laughs> it had not been two minutes since Esther had asked the universe to show her someone who felt like she felt. His wife was in the car, clearly not feeling that way. <laughs> She didn't want him to make an illegal U-turn. Esther felt certain that he was coming. If he'd have been a generation younger, he'd have high-fived her. <laughs> it was that feeling of exhilaration, that feeling of being in control of your own life, that feeling of doing what's best for you. And of course, Esther wanted to tell him so many things because she was enjoying his enthusiasm so much. She wanted to say, I do that kind of thing all the time. <laughs> so, you get what we're talking about. We're talking about getting tuned in, tapped in, turned on, getting into that place where you're in such vibrational alignment with clarity and knowing and broader perspective that you access the leverage of the energy that creates worlds. And you begin to create as you've intended to create, not with your physical determination, not with struggle and stress, but by accessing this energy and pointing it toward the things that you are asking for through open pipes that you are practicing.